All right, students, we are back talking about the mole. And um, not that mole, that little furry creature that lives underground. Um, blind as a bat, right? Um, but this mole is a number. Now, you will get overwhelmed if you think about the mole as anything other than a number, which is why I put in here um, a dozen. What is a dozen? It's 12, right? And what's a baker's dozen? It's 13. Or a score. Now, that's kind of an old way of numbering something. You ever uh, hear a part of Abe Lincoln's speech, you know, four score and etc. Uh, a score is 20 years. It represents the quantity 20. And there's other quantities like that, like a pair means two. A mole is a huge, huge number. In fact, it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a gigantic number. You try and put that in a calculator, that is in a scientific calculator, it's going to tell you error. It's too, too huge to even comprehend. In fact, I'm going to write it out in a minute, um, and, and you're going to be pretty fascinated by how large this number is. But we need this number. The reason is, is because atoms are really, really, really small, unfathomably small. We're talking a cell, something we can't even see with our eye, contains trillions upon trillions of atoms. And um, I have a cup of water here. Um, it's not even halfway full. And uh, this cup of water contains approximately this many atoms. And I'm just going to guess here, but it's an educated guess. I'd put some stock into this. It contains about this many atoms. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 21, 22, 23, 24, probably a little bit more than, um, than that many atoms. That's a lot. That's a, that's a lot, a lot of water molecules. Something we can't even fathom. More than the sand on the shore. Um, they are so numerous. An atom is so incredibly small. And... So to quantify those, we use a mole, and that helps us to be able to talk about something that is so small. Just like uh, we use the light year in space to describe something that's so far away, because if we described it in miles, it would be trillions upon trillions of miles, something we just can't even fathom. So we came up with a different unit, and that is the light year. And uh, really, you might ask yourself, um, so how's this number useful? Is it just an abstract number? Well, in a way, it is abstract. Um, the guy who came up with it um, really uh, came up with it based on um, how much atoms he believed to be in um, a cup of carbon, actually, um, is what he used. Um, specifically, it would be 12 grams of carbon-12. Kind of strange. So a little ab abstract, yes. Useful? Absolutely. More than you know. Um, the mole is the basis of molecular chemistry on every level. Um, although it's somewhat abstract, the number of grams per mole is equal to the molecular mass. Okay, so we've done molecular mass before. For instance, we have C2. H6, and I'm going to go back here and write C2H6. I'm sorry, I just have to use my computer. It's all I got. Um, and we know that 2 times the molecular mass of carbon, which is 12, according to our periodic table, added to 6 
times the molecular mass of hydrogen, which is 1 according to our periodic table. And traditionally, we've written 24 plus 6, uh, that would be 30 U, or 30 atomic mass units. Um, this can also be written in terms of moles. 30 grams per mole. Now, think of what that per means in mathematics. And um, maybe we'll have to beckon the spirit of Mrs. Cherry here as we talk about this. Um, if there are three peas per pod, and you have three pods, how many peas would you have? Three peas per pod, three pods, it'd be nine peas. Um, that's just an example of something used correctly when we say something per something else. So in every mole, there's 30 grams. In every mole of C2H6, uh, that means if I put together C2H6 and I had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them, or one mole of them, I would weigh them out and it would be exactly 30 grams. That's how this is useful. The mole relates mass to quantity. Let me say that again. The mole relates mass to quantity. Two things which are seemingly unrelated can be related through the mole. Very similar to uh, maybe you go to the doctors and there's those growth charts and uh, they measure your height and weight and you know they they kind of relate them together. Now height and weight really aren't super related but we can relate them together through through an average chart. Kind of similar here. The number of compounds is related to the mass of the compound. Now, let's think about this as we look at our second example. S3F8. Let me write it out. S3F8. Now, um, I'm actually going to have to look up the molecular mass of sulfur. I think it is 32. 32 um, atomic mass units, yep. So 32 uh, multiplied by the number of sulfur, which is 3. Um, that is 96 total. And then added to the, the uh, 8 multiplied by the molecular mass of fluorine. And uh, fluorine, I believe, has a molecular mass of 18. Um, let's see, 18, yep. 18.999. Uh, let's round it up to 19. And so we're going to... Uh, put 19, and uh, considering I don't want to do any crazy amount of math on the fly, I'm actually going to do 8 times 19 is 152. How cool is technology? 152. 96 plus uh, 152 is 8, 4, um, you and so uh, this uh, trisulfur octafluoride here has a molecular mass of 248 U or atomic mass units let's relate that to the mole in every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these there will be 248 grams, or 248 grams per mole. And uh, that's really the idea uh, that we're aiming at, relating mass and quantity. Of course, um, the bigger the atom, the more mass it will have, the more each mole will weigh. 
That makes sense, right? The taller you are, the more likely you are to be heavy, right? So um, I'm six foot tall, 180 pounds, and that's okay because uh, I'm six foot tall. But if I was five foot tall, 180 pounds wouldn't be okay. I'd be rather large. Um, but it's related, of course, to my height. Now, um, the usefulness of a mole... And I'm going to introduce this topic, but we're going to finish it tomorrow because it's going to contain no small amount of math. And, of course, uh, math is something that I don't want to shove at you in some, um, in some condensed session. Um, molarity, also called the amount concentration, helps scientists measure the concentration of a solution. For instance, a 1 molarity concentration of hydrochloric acid is a lot more powerful than a, a 0 0.01 molarity concentration of HCl. Okay, This here is a lot less concentrated than this here. And uh, so um, this amount of HCl has a lot more water in it. This one has a lot more hydrochloric acid in it. This HCl is a very powerful acid. It's stomach acid. And so if you paid me a million dollars to drink a liter of this, I would die. So I wouldn't do it. If you paid me a million dollars to drink a liter of this, I would drink it and subsequently have my stomach pumped and be a millionaire. Okay? <laughs> because they're two very different things. This would be mostly water as it's not very concentrated. This would be mostly hydrochloric acid, as it's a lot more concentrated. In fact, 100 times more concentrated than this um, certain portion of HCl here. And uh, this is useful because, um, because everything comes in a concentration, right? So um, as an example, uh, let's say you buy Tylenol, right? And uh, you get those little tabs, and um, there's they're going to be about 200 milligrams of Tylenol. But you can buy extra strength ones, right? They're the same size, but maybe they have 500 milligrams of Tylenol. So the ones that have 200 milligrams are Tylenol, but it's not as concentrated. It's mostly sugar, actually, and just a little bit of Tylenol. Um, the ones that are 500 milligrams are mostly Tylenol, but only a little bit of sugar. Uh, those are very concentrated. And you can even buy extremely concentrated tabs of Tylenol, 1,000 milligrams, and they're sold under prescription brands, and they're still the same size. It's just mostly Tylenol in that case, a very concentrated solution with high molarity, because molarity measures concentration. And there's a formula for that, but that formula is something for tomorrow, where we will talk about both molarity and molality. And um, I don't want to spoil the fun, so uh, you are all done today. You do not have any homework, but you should have somewhere around 10 minutes remaining. With the time remaining, I would highly suggest mostly demand, okay? that you work on that study guide that I gave you before I left. And um, that's the one with 15 questions, which reviews molecular mass and reviews naming um, the ionic and covalent compounds according to the rules. Help each other out, particularly those of you who understand these sort of things, because, of course, I am not present. Um, and uh, uh, if all else fails, you can, of course, type it into Google, and Google will know um, how to name something or what the molecular mass is, so you can check it. All right? Have a wonderful Wednesday and um, a great church service tonight if you go. Um, I will see you all on video tomorrow.